have a look at this. 3.62 we have. All these batteries are in parallel. And guys, we did it. We are feature complete here in the off-grid garage. We've got all the gear, all the stuff, all the devices, all the electronics, everything we need to build this system. At least as far as I know. Well, at the moment I've got only these eight ones here in parallel and I charged them for the last probably four days with the um, DC buck converter from our power supply here. 15 amps I got out of it. Well, eight batteries. So this means less than two amps per battery. And they were on 3.3 3.34 volts for the last couple of days and it didn't progress at all nothing nothing happened and i was charging day and night with this power supply nothing happened and this morning i had 3.35 on it and this afternoon 3.36 and this evening it was on 3.65 and that's what i set the buck converter to to fully charge the battery because we want to top balance everything now um, before we put them in series connection and build the actual battery. Well, these ones are still in series connection, as you can see here, and they also have the balance leads connected. I, I have built the 48 volt battery already here on the workbench. I was thinking about, well, before I put everything into this box here and get this all cabled up, I should actually try and see if this all works together as I was designing it, as I was expecting it, as I was hoping for it would work together. So I set up the battery here, all the 16 cells, put them all in series connection, hooked up the actual BMS the first time. Well, this was a bit of a nightmare at the beginning because the app I had from the Apple Play Store did not work. There is no option to change any configurations in this app. It shows you the dashboard, the overview about your battery. So it reads all this stuff, but you cannot change anything. There's no button. There's no, no configuration button, nothing. And I looked online for quite a while. And well, eventually I sent a message to the actual supplier in China and said, look, I've got this BMS from you for the last six weeks. I haven't connected it yet. What can I do to get this working with the app? And they replied within half an hour. They sent me the wiring diagram for these um, balance leads here for a seven for a 16S battery, and also uh, a link to download the app. And this was a newer version, actually. They sent me, and this worked just fine. So I could see all the parameters. I could change all the parameters. I could see the BMS balancing the cells. I could change the balance threshold inside the configuration. I could see single cells being balanced by the BMS. The voltage was dropping again. So everything was working just fine. It was so exciting, guys. And I had to contact them anyway because I didn't have the actual wiring diagram for this BMS here because... Uh, I don't want to go into any details here, but as you can see, it has two, it has two balance lead plugs here, because this is a 7S 220S, and there are certain combinations where you have to combine, you have to solder some of the leads together, and it depends totally on the configuration. And they have sent me a wiring diagram, and you can see it here from the picture. See this one here, number 14, cell number 14. It uses five of the wires together to sense the voltage term. And then number 15 is a single wire again. And the last one has two wires again. So it depends on what kind of configuration, what kind of batteries you have. Depending on if you have a 7S or a 20S or anything in between, you need to get back to the supplier of the BMS and ask them for a wiring diagram for your specific setup and battery configuration. Otherwise, it will not work. And I think because you have to do this for this 16S, you have to combine all these cables into one. So all these cables, they are sensing the same voltage and this one sensing the same voltage. This is how the logic processor inside the BMS recognizes this is a 16S 
battery and then it configures accordingly. Yeah, and this was a bit of a weird thing for me to find out. I have seen the configuration, I have seen the wiring diagrams for other batteries for a different BMS, and they had some of the wiring cables combined as well. And I thought, well, there was nothing here in the manual about it or something, but I looked online and found several diagrams for this BMS where cables have been merged into one contact and were sensing the same voltage of one battery cell. So luckily I got in contact with them and they replied within half an hour uh, with a very detailed answer and gave me the wiring diagram as well as, well as the link for the app. So this was all solved within half an hour. But I was researching it for over an hour before, actually. And then I said, well, the last resort now is to contact the supplier and ask them for help. And this worked just fine. So the BMS is just working fine. It was super very exciting to plug in these wiring cables into the BMS. And it started beeping and you could hear the contactor clicking inside. And everything was up and running and the app connected straight away to it. And that was very, very exciting. I did this all off camera. I wasn't sure what will happen here. And of course, I will do this again now, step by step and walk you through the whole process of setting up individual cells into a battery, including balance leads, connecting it to the BMS and first look at the BMS, what to program and how this all works together. And I also had the Victron charge controller, the MPPT charge controller here connected to the 48 volt butt battery. This was all connected to the BMS here and the BMS was then connected to the last uh, negative. And I had two long wires here going all the way over my workbench into the electrical cabinet up to the fuses. And I had one string of the solar panels connected to the charge controller and was actually charging the battery with 300 milliamps. <laughs> that was late in the afternoon. The sun was already going down, you know. There was no it, there was no sun on the solar panels anymore. And it was a bit cloudy as well. But everything worked. The charge controller worked and, and it charged the battery. The BMS recognized this, this. This was all working together. And this was the main thing for me to test before I put everything in the box and and wire this and and cut the cut the big cable here and everything you know just in case something wasn't working as I thought it will work but it it looks like everything is just fine everything is working you can imagine I was so relieved that this is all working especially the BMS because I wasn't sure how this all works together and how to program it and I have you've seen all these other videos when people do this, you know, they they show you the they show you the app of the BMS and all the parameters in there and there are so much to change and, and set up and everything and this is totally a different experience when you do it yourself, you know. But everything is working, guys. Everything is working as designed as it should be. I'm so glad. Today, just the um, the um, 35 millimeter cable, is four gauge, I think, four gauge cable has arrived, and and um, the um, the terminal lugs in different sizes have arrived, and this is all now here. So I can really start building this battery up. I have balanced and char fully charged this row of batteries now, and I will do the same with this one. And but these batteries are all over three point three five volts already so they don't take long to fully charge to 3.65 as well and then i put them all together again for a day let them balance and then i take them apart and they will become a battery 48 volt yeah guys this is all very very exciting and this is exactly why i came back in the garage i would just wanted to show you what is happening here because we haven't done a workbench video for a while. I was working on the cabinet and on solar panels and everything, but this is what I did off camera. And this, this exactly brings me to the second point I just want to quickly talk about. This is the community, the help I got from you guys, leaving all these comments under my videos, giving me help and telling me in which order I have, I should mount these uh, devices, these, components inside the battery box and giving me all these tips and tricks and 
sharing your experience here and other people have elaborated on my videos and added content and explained this all a little bit further. One guy had such a long comment in there and he talked about surface charge of batteries and everything. And this is so much appreciated. This You can't believe it. This is, this is insane. What we are gathering here on information to share with the community is outstanding. And I really need to thank you again for all your comments and all your help here on the channel. All the comments you leave are help for other people. And I know we've still got a lot of people there which are struggling with the basics of electronics and electric voltage and amps and resistance. And, and they don't quite understand why a charge controller can never charge if the voltage is lower than the battery voltage. And this is all stuff we need to revisit again and explain in all details why this is all happening so they get the understanding. They just need to understand the basics of the electric circuit. So we will explain this again and again on many other examples like this one. This beautiful battery here. Yeah, and one viewer left a comment and said, look, if you have a BMS and you just bought this smart shunt from Victron, he said, I should keep the receipt and return this one here. Basically, the BMS gives you exactly the same information as the smart control from Victron. I haven't decided if I should keep it or if I should sell it or give it back or something. But, I mean, the good thing is that these devices all work together. You can combine them in one Bluetooth network and they work together. So the solar charge controller is reading the voltage from the smart shunt, which sits directly at the battery. And then it takes this voltage into account to charge the battery. So it overcomes, so it overcomes all the cable losses as well. And there, there are some advantages to use these combinations of devices. Apart from having this all combined in this app and, and later on I was planning to add a display to the cabinet over there so we can see all the parameters and all the statuses at the front of the of the door yeah and just um quickly in regards to the electrical cabinet here i've put on the wall now i know the m10 thread is only 1.5 millimeter into this stud here i think it's totally fine i was hanging on to the cabinet actually and it it was holding me and the cabinet on the wall there was nothing happening it's still there as you can see a lot of people are concerned about heat inside this cabinet here. Well, it's an 80, it's an 800 millimeter by 600 millimeter cabinet. So it's a fairly large surface you've got here. Once we mount the solar charge controller on this metal here, this one acts like a big heat sink. It also transfers the heat to the outside of the cabinet. And we've got space behind it here. A lot of space where air can circulate. I know the inverter has around 10% of loss. If we run the full power of 3 kilowatt, this is about 300 watts of loss inside the cabinet. I'm not sure how hot the actual charge controller gets. We are not pulling the full 35 amps all the time, all day long, you know. So I think the whole cabinet, because it's full steel, it's very thick steel, acts like a heatsink a little bit. It will transfer the heat from the inside, well, I call it heat. It will not be hot inside. It will be warm maybe, but not hot. So I think it will transfer the heat from the inside via this metal cabinet to the outside. I may be totally wrong. I don't know. This is something I need to experience first. And also Victron claims that this charge controller has an efficiency of over 98%. So I'm not expecting much heat actually coming from this device here. And we're running this one at about 100 volt DC for the incoming cable and 50 volt for the outgoing cable to the battery. And it's the other way around. This is solar, this is battery. So the conversion factor is not that high, you know, from 100 volt to 50 volt. It's not like we are having 150 volt DC input and charging a 12 volt battery then you probably have higher conversion losses as well. But I don't know how hot these things get. I mean, this is a full metal enclosure and it sits on a passive heatsink anyway here. This is all metal and this metal will be connected to the internal mounting plate. This is all full metal then. So it should transfer the heat to the outside, to the backside of the wall of the cabinet and the air should just circulate at the back 
of this cabinet and cool it down. This is this is my thinking at the moment. If this is the case, I don't know. This is just what I expect to happen. But maybe you guys are right and it gets too hot inside. Well, then we need to install some fans and a thermal management to get the heat out, to have some air circulation in there. But I'll try without any air circulation before, just with this charge controller and the inverter. This is all which goes in the cabinet at the moment. Yeah, guys, so far this update from tonight, it was not about a certain topic this time. It was more to give you an overview how far we are, how close we are. And I think we are very close. So on the workbench, everything is working fine. Everything is working as designed. Big thumbs up again to you guys for helping me out, for giving the right tips, the right advice and helping to get this project out of the ground and becoming a reality. And we are close. We are very close. I'm super, super excited. So I hope to get this all. Well, I hope I can start putting the batteries in over the weekend. Um, I've prepared all this so far. This all looks good in my head at least. So let's see what happens. And I'll keep making these videos for you and myself to gain further feedback. So you can, you can actually see how far we are and how this all works together then. Well, another, another thing I found is, see, I've numbered all these battery cells from one to 16. And this is my main positive terminal here. This is cell number one, but in the BMS, it's exactly the other way around. They start counting from the negative terminal and this is battery number one. When you see the diagram with all the battery cells in it and it starts balancing, this is number one. So I have to take this into account as well when I build the actual battery. So the first battery number one is the most negative one. And then we go all the way across. And number 16 is the one with the most positive terminal. These are all things I will just learned by setting this up on the workbench here. And I'm so glad I didn't put everything into the box. And then, was, and then I would have wondered why this is all not matching up with the diagram inside the app. These are all these little tips and tricks you find on the way when you set up this battery yourself. And then you say, oh yeah, that makes sense. Okay, they are counting from here, not from there. So. Oh guys, as you can tell, I'm excited, right? I'm excited and I think you are excited too. We are getting very close with all this stuff here. Okay, let me put this battery in parallel now. Get it charged so we can start building this battery. Hashtag build the battery. And again, a super big thank you to all my viewers here, to everyone who leaves comments down there, to ask questions, other people replying to these questions, helping each other out. That is fantastic. And this makes exactly these projects possible. As always, guys, thank you so, so much again. And we shall see us again in the next video when we hopefully start building this battery. Okay, thanks again. See you then. Bye-bye.